and even going further in, in, in Acts 10.43. How are you folks doing? How this? In Acts 10.43, throwing us back to the Old Testament, Luke writes that all the prophets, that's throwing us back to the Old Testament, all the prophets, anytime we see the law and the prophets, the law or the prophets, whatever, that throws us back to the Old Testament, all the prophets testify about Him, that everyone who believes in Him, of course, Everyone who believes, believes in A lot of people don't believe. That's right. A lot of people don't believe. But you will not see eternal life apart from Jesus Christ, my friend. You must believe in order to be saved. That everyone who believes in Him receives forgiveness of sins through His name. So everyone who does not believe is not forgiven. Everyone who does not believe is considered to be a child of wrath. A child of the devil. Only those who have put their faith, their trust, and the Lord Jesus are considered to be children of God. Now we have many among us who would walk around saying, well, I just don't believe that. Well, that's fine, but what is the problem? Is the problem one of evidence? Is the problem an issue of the intellect? What exactly is the reason that men and women reject Jesus Christ? Well, let's look at Romans chapter 1. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile. And we already discussed that. Their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. This is the result of man suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. So we see that the issue is not one of the intellect. The issue is not one of evidence. We've all been given evidence of God. We've got creation. We've got the ability to think rationally and logically. We have the innate knowledge and recognition that there is good and there is evil, that there is right and there is wrong. So we see that the problem is not one of evidence. Rather, man chooses to suppress the truth in unrighteousness. But the question is, why does he do this? Why do men suppress the truth of our Creator, the obvious truth, the overwhelming truth that just hits everybody in the face? Why do they choose to suppress the truth in unrighteousness? And the reason for that is given in John chapter 3, 19 and 20. That Jesus speaking to Nicodemus said, this is the verdict. This is the judgment. That man that men love darkness rather than light. The light was Christ. That men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Man loves sin. That's why he rejects God. It's not an issue of evidence. It's not an issue of the intellect. Man will believe anything, no matter how ludicrous, as long as he can profess his unbelief in our Creator, the obvious and overwhelming truth. Apart from God, there is no good, there is no evil, there is no right, there is no wrong. A person who does not know God through faith in Jesus Christ cannot say, 
that that individual who murdered 17 students in Florida a couple months back was wrong in what he did. Because apart from God, all you are left with is your opinion. And your opinion carries no weight because his opinion said on that day he was right.